Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to, to this day. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to Children's Sunday. We pray, Lord, that as we go into your word, the Holy Spirit, you'll guide us and help us understand. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about developing godly character. Developing godly character. Now, our main scripture is from Galatians 5, to 23. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Amen. As Christians, we have to show these fruits in every circumstance. Every day we must think about how we can show these fruits in our lives. We must make a conscious effort to show the fruit of the Spirit daily. It won't just happen until we intentionally make the effort. If one or more is a particular weakness, you can ask God to help you to get better at it. For example, if when you have an exam and everyone else is worried, as Christians, we must have God's peace knowing that if we've worked hard, God will help us do well. Or when people are around us are getting on our nerves we can have self-control to help control our anger and i'm sure you could think of many other ways where we can show the fruit of the spirit so so they can be seen by others when those who aren't christians see us behaving in a way our actions point to heaven being aware of this helps us keep centering on christ and this will ensure we stay close to him daily Now, the fruit of the Spirit is a natural product of the Holy Spirit. And just like normal fruit, it takes time for the fruit of the Spirit to grow inside of us so that we can show it outwards. The Holy Spirit's main purpose is to change our lives. Once we allow him in, he can help us change our character into godly character. Now, what is character? What is godly character, you may ask? The dictionary definition for character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. We have the choice to have good character or bad character. If you choose to have bad character, then the behaviours that you show will be negative, both in the thoughts you have and the actions you do. This last week, some boys from year 10 and 11 broke into my school, vandalised and burglarised property, smashing windows, destroying computers. This is a result of bad character, which, can be, which is caused, causes negative actions. They didn't seem to care how their actions would impact everyone else's learning and safety. They chose to behave this way. The way we act is a choice. If you choose to have have good character, then the behaviours you will show will be positive, both in the thoughts you have and the actions you do. But having good character is not enough. We must have godly character. The difference between the dictionary definition of character and having godly character is that we have the fruit of the Spirit in us. We can, or I think that some, or scripture that sums this all up is Matthew 7, 16 to 20. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from th- thistles a good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit so every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire yes just as you can identify a fruit by its tree so you can identify people by their actions now you need God to activate these fruits of the spirit in us and this can only happen by doing these two things number one by prayer and we can read this in Luke 11:12 to 13 Luke 11:12 to 13 Luke 11:12 to 13 or it says, or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is saying that we just need to ask and God will give us the Holy Spirit. 
We can also read Jude one twenty. Jude one twenty. says, but you, dear friends, must build each other in your most holy faith, pray, pray, in, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. So praying in tongues can also activate the fruit of the Spirit. Another way to activate the fruit of the Spirit is number two, by reading his word and meditating it all the time. You can read Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. So I study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it day and night, so be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. We can also read Psalm 1, can also read Psalm 1 verse 2. Psalm 1 verse 2. But they delight in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night. Now today we're going to be looking at now today we to be looking at how the Holy Spirit helps us develop the characteristics of love and the characteristics of love. Galatians five fourteen. 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 But the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. This shows that love is the greatest and most important fruit of the Spirit. We can also really see this in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. This shows that we must love others and ourselves. And show respect and kindness to ourselves and the ones of others. When I had a friend at school who wanted to stay out, to stay inside at break time. I wanted to stay outside at break time. So I had to touch for the balance by showing love to her, but also showing love to myself. Now we have a thing called a black pillow, which is God's unconditional selfless love. John 3.16. John 3.16. John 3.16 For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You can also read 1 John 4, 7 to 11. 1 John 4, 7 to 11. First John 4, 7 to 11. First John four seven to eleven. First John four seven to eleven. It says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have an eternal, eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loves us that much, we surely ought to love one another. Now, as we read in verse 11, it says that since God loved us, then we should love others. This means we must be humble and selfish. I had another friend who was being bullied by everyone, but I still decided to be friends with her. Even though that could be hard, being friends with somebody who everyone dislikes could mean they could dislike you. But even if they disliked me, the Bible says in 1 John 3.13, 1 John 3.13, 1 John 3.13, it First John 3.13 says, So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you, because our worth is found in God, not in the world. This shows you must not be scared, but ask God to help you. This shows not to be selfish, but to give our lives, status, etc. for others, as it says in 1 John 3.16. First John 3.16 says, 1 John 3.16 
1 John 3, 16. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now, as we read in, we can see that God is love, as we read in 1 John 4, verse 8, and also 1 John 4, verse 16. 1 John 4, verse 16 says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So this is saying that we must be like him. We must be Christ-like. If God is in us, then we are carrying his love. God gave his selfless love to us. If we don't love others, then we are nothing. It's our duty to love others if we love God. As it says in 1 John 4 verse 20, 1 John 4 verse 20, if someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person's a liar. For if we don't if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? It is not enough to say you love someone, but we have to show you love them by actions, like it says in first John three eighteen. First John three eighteen. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Showing his love can be just as easy as praying for someone, forgiving someone, buying someone some lunch, paying for someone's water. Now in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, it describes what love is. Let's read it together, putting our names where it says love or it is. For example, saying Phoebe, your name is patient and kind. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Let's follow along as we read. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. that's part of the name where it says love Phoebe is not patient Phoebe is ca- patient and kind Phoebe Phoebe is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude Phoebe is not does not demand its own way Phoebe is not irritable Phoebe keeps no reckon, record of being wrong Phoebe does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out Phoebe never gives up never loses faith is always hopeful and adjust through every circumstance. Amen. This is God's type of love, the agape love. If love is these things, and we are made in the image of God, who is love, therefore we are love, then we must be these things. So finally, let's read John 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 34. John 13, 34 to 35. So now I'm giving you a commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. This is saying we should love others as Christ has loved us. When people see us, they will see Christ and the love of God in us. They will see Christ in our character because we have godly character. So that's my challenge for you today. Think of ways you can show love to others and lead them to Christ. Amen. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for today. We pray, Lord, that you help us to show godly character wherever we go. We pray, Lord, that you help us to show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control wherever we go. We pray, Lord, you help us to use the fruit of the Spirit and that we will make Jesus famous in everything we do and will be a shining light to others. For in Jesus' name we have prayed.